Now, Britain has to pick its next Prime Minister. They have narrowed down their search to two candidates, Rishi Sunak and Liz Truss. They will be facing off against each other in the final runoff. Sunak has led the race so far, but an opinion poll claims that he could lose the final vote. Our next report has more details. It was Boris Johnson's last chance to take questions in Parliament as Prime Minister. After the usual sparring with the opposition, he racked up with some advice for his successor. I want to use the last few seconds, Mr Speaker, to give some words of advice to, uh, to my successor, whoever he or she uh, may be. Number one, stay close to the Americans, stick up for the Ukrainians, stick up for freedom and democracy everywhere. Cut taxes and deregulate wherever you can to make this the greatest place to live and invest, which it is. And Mr Speaker, uh, I want to thank everybody here and hasta la vista, baby. Thank you. Here is the man hoping to replace him, Rishi Sunak, Johnson's former Secretary of Treasury. Sunak launched his bid with much fanfare. In his initial pitch, Sunak promised a better future for all Brits. Do we confront this moment with honesty, seriousness and determination? Or do we tell ourselves comforting fairy tales? And when it came to facing his rivals, Sunak didn't pull his punches. Let's be clear, we have inflation <coughs> because of our monetary policy, that we haven't been tough enough on the monetary supply. That's the way I would address that issue. Okay. But it is wrong. Interest rates up. Mortgage is nightmare. It, it is. It is. <laughs> well, we, look, we, we, Liz, we have to be honest. We, well, we have to honest. be honest. But borrowing your way out of inflation isn't a plan. It's a fairy tale. Sunak's message is working. He has led the leadership race so far. Sunak, 118 votes. Conservative Trust, MPs 86. have been voting to pick the final the contenders. The race started with eight contest. candidates. Just two of them will make it to the ballot. Sunak is guaranteed a place in the final runoff, but his victory is far from certain. A poll has predicted that Sunak will lose the runoff. In the final round, all members of the Conservative Party will vote, and Sunak doesn't seem to be their favourite. Against all other candidates, he stands to lose big time. Kemi Bednach, Liz Truss and Penny Mordaunt they all poll better than Rishi Suna. These three leaders can secure more than 50% of the votes. Less than 40% of the voters want Rishi Sunak as the next Prime Minister. Can Sunak turn his fortunes around? Conservative Party members will cast their votes over the summer. The results will be declared in September. So Sunak has the time for one final push. But he has a mountain to climb if he wants to win the Conservative Party election. Vyond is now available in your country. Down He's Alam, broadcaster uh, and director of CineLink, and Nicholas Nugent, uh, journalist and former BBC editor, uh, joining us as well. Thank you all very much for being with us. Uh, Lord Rami Ranger, to you first. Why do you think that Britain would be seen as racist uh, if Rishi Sunak was not to win this this battle uh, when you look at just the lineup of how many people were actually contesting uh, in, in this conservative race almost half of them were from ethnic minority backgrounds so is that a fair judgment to make thank you Nidhi. i i have been misquoted what i said was rishi has won the heart of a parliamentarian he's been selected by the vast number of the his colleagues in the parliament if overwhelming population rejects Rishi, it will be perceived by some as racism because Rishi has got a track record of success. He was one of the best chancellors with a great imagination. He saved millions of jobs, livelihoods, small businesses with his furlough scheme. So he has been a very dynamic, very young, full of energy, a visionary chancellor. So I think the public has to give him the mandate because of his parliamentary colleagues have given him the mandate. Otherwise, it'll be uh, a very mismatch. The people have selected someone and the parliamentarians, parliamentarians have selected someone. It will not be a clear signal 
uh, for the prime minister he will not be a very strong or robust prime minister if both the people uh, people and the parliamentary don't endorse his candidature so that is my, what i'm saying although i also said the british is a very british are very fair and uh, uh, and tolerant people as a result people like rishi and me would be where they are because there is no there are uh, laws against racism the law against discrimination of any kind. So the very fact that immigration have, immigrants have reached to that level shows British sense of tolerance and fair play. So I, I'm not saying British uh, are, are racist. What I'm saying is it might be perceived by some if overwhelming. If it's a 50, 50, 40, 60, that's fair enough. But if 90% of the public reject racism, then obviously people, some, some may perceive that to be a racist factor. That was my okay. Uh, let me take that to Shruti Kapila. Shruti Kapila, do you agree with that assessment? Uh, when you look at the Conservative Party today, though, uh, you know, a little more closely, you do see uh, that people, again, you know, from ethnic minority backgrounds are fairly widely represented. You have Preeti Patel, you have Sajid Javed, uh, you know, uh, and others, you know, who are, who are in the cabinet. So uh, would racism really be a factor in Rishi Sunak's case? I mean, I think there's a massive shift going on in terms of left-right uh, concerns in British politics. You would expect uh, sort of multiculturalism, race inclusivity from the Labour Party, which has traditionally held the South Asian vote in Britain for, you know, for decades. And that's shifted since Cameron and the top table, as you rightly point out, is very multicultural. And, and in fact, two of the candidates, three of the candidates were non-white in the end because, of course, Kami Bedenok from, from Ghana as well was in, in the final end. Having said that, I think I also think that Sunak is, you know, protesting too much uh, to say that, you know, uh, when he said, you know, he's brought in, uh, he's planning on bringing in um, criticisms of the, Brit uh, of the British state and, uh, and nationalism as a major aspect of a, a prevent strategy, which means that you can be like, not quite sedition, but you can be shocked for it. You can be actually taken to the police for holding such uh, views. So I think he's kind of bending over backwards. And that's partly because the, the makeup of the Conservative Party is changing. The membership seems to be now very I wouldn't say old, but older and white and southern. And it has, as it were, voting now coming from, a, you know, from the north, from different kinds of constituencies, not, in, not, in, you know, not excluding the non-white. So I don't say race is out, but it's not front and center. And it actually now poses a major challenge to the Labour Party on whether it is actually going to change its top table. That's very interesting that you say that. Uh, I mean, uh, would it be right to infer that, in a sense, then, for the Conservative Party, uh, it's OK if you have uh, non-white people, you know, in the cabinet holding other top posts, but the top post uh, is something they're still uncomfortable with, uh, some, you know, a non-white person holding? I mean, I wouldn't say it's, I mean, I'm not sure if they're comfortable or uncomfortable because both Kenny Badenoch as well as Sunak, but also others are, are fairly popular amongst the Tory membership. It's just that the, the 160,000 people who are going to vote are, are going to be predominantly white, much older and not in highly representative of the electorate. Having said that, if you look at more wider polls, uh, they don't think that Sunak will be able to take on Keir Starmer. There's also now a momentum that whether he is a good prime ministerial candidate to actually take on uh, the opposition. So it's a much wider issue. It's an issue around what's going on within the Tory party because there, there's a, the other irony that he was pro-Brexit, pro but uh, Truss isn't. She's otherwise a continuity candidate with Johnson. So I think this, this is not really a clear-cut yes-no kind of campaign uh, and I think she has a lot of momentum of the local uh, the, the, the younger people but as uh, as your preceding panelist said you know Sunak at the moment has a run of the MPs and this is going to be problematic for for trust to come in to not have a significant chunk of the, uh, of the parliamentary party behind her that's interesting also the fact that there is that division between uh, the, yeah. the supports Rishi Sunak has from members of parliament from his party and the wider conservative party. Mr. Virinder Sharma, you know, you're from the Labour Party. How does Labour look at this and how do you see uh, Rishi Sunak's race? Do you think he's being judged more on his record and, and you know, genuine controversies that came, uh, you know, to the fore, whether it was about his wife's tax issues or the criticism he's faced about raising taxes, etc. Is he being judged more on that than anything else? Lizzie, thank you very much for asking me to comment on other political party 
uh, I will be a natural, uh, have the natural prejudice against the conservative, whoever becomes the prime minister uh, of the country. Uh, race will be having some element into it. Uh, there's no doubt, though, we, as Rami, Lord Rami Ranger have said that we have the laws, we have everything, we have moved from 1950s to now 2022. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a change and shift, but there's still some mindset, and we will be uh, uh, seeing that. But I don't think that this will be the whole issue of uh, whether it is Indian origin MP, uh, prime minister or not. The membership and the party will be looking at who have the potential to win the next general election amongst the Tory party candidate. As a Labour, we don't see it will make much difference. We don't, uh, I, I won't use the term care, but certainly it doesn't uh, make us uh, worry whether who becomes uh, the PM, we will be fighting on our agenda and we will be fighting whoever becomes the uh, next PM from the Conservative Party. Right. Uh, Nicholas Nugent, what explains the fact that Rishi Sunak was such an overwhelming favourite amongst his uh, MP colleagues and not amongst the wider Conservative Party base? Why is well, that, that gap? I think you'd I have think, to unmute um, your mic. This is exactly the point. The electorates that we're talking about are different. Um, yes, overwhelming vote uh, amongst Conservative MPs, uh, which rather suggests that they think he has the best chance of returning the party to power at the next election. But now the vote is entirely in the hands of Conservative Party members, of whom there are said to be 160,000. And I think this is why we should be a bit suspicious of the opinion polls, because the opinion polls are of the people, the country at large, um, but it's only Conservative members who have a vote to decide whether Rishi or Liz Truss uh, get selected. And about the racism factor, can I just remind you that uh, Rishi Sunak was elected to Parliament with a massive majority of 27,000. He's already won the support of his constituency. And indeed, as, as I've said, uh, he's won the support of parliamentary MPs. So he's a popular figure. There's no doubt about that. And he's respected a lot for uh, what he's done as uh, Minister of Finance, Chancellor of the Exchequer. But I think one factor you need to take into account now that the Conservative Party at larger voting is the loyalty factor. Is he going to be punished for being one of the first to resign from the cabinet? In other words, helping bring Boris Johnson down. I think that's a factor we need to take account of because not all Conservative Party members were happy with the uh, ousting of Boris Johnson. So he risks suffering a little bit for that reason um, at large, whereas Liz Truss, of course, is still in the cabinet, so she's regarded as a loyalist. So I think those are the factors we need to look at when we consider or when we try to assess whether Rishi's going to make it home or not. At the moment, it looks like he's the loser, but I wouldn't trust the opinion polls. It's interesting you say that. So you think he's still in, in with the chance that things uh, you know, could, could change between now and the 5th of September. We might have a surprise result. That's what you're saying. Well, I'm not going beyond saying I don't trust the opinion polls because the opinion polls are not in a position to gauge the opinion of the people who are voting, the members of the Conservative Party, and that's crucial. So, yes, of course, he's still in with a chance, but I don't know whether it's a small chance or a big chance or very little chance, but um, time will tell. I think w what we're trying to gauge now is the opinion of Conservative Party members at large in the country, who tend to be rather traditional, who tend to respect loyalty, things like that. So we need, we need to keep an open mind. Let's put it like that. Fair enough. I, I don't think you need to convince us here in India. We don't trust opinion <laughs> polls most of the time either. Uh, yeah. But uh, Lord Meghnath Desai, what's your take on this race? Uh, you think Rishi Sunak would make it? You know, I think we ought to forget about all this race business. Uh, in Britain, it's a matter of class, not race. You know, after Dada Ben Navarroji became an MP, uh, you know, 100 years ago, and he did not face any racial discrimination, so did Manchurji Bhavnagri, and, and there have been people in parliament of race. And in the, in the conservative competition, there were several, there were four or five people of, of non-white race. 
I know it's basically the thing about Rishi Sunak. It has come too soon in his career to be competing like this. I mean, he's only a second term of an MP. Yes, he became a chancellor and he was a good chancellor during the pandemic. That's true. But he really is not yet a politician. He's sort of a techno. He's a very good technical expert. He, he speaks like a technician. He doesn't speak like a politician. And I think it makes a lot of difference how you speak to people, how you convey your empathy to people. So I think he's a very bright person, there's no doubt. But I don't think this time he's going to win it. And you think that's just because of a lack of experience uh, in, in lack politics of experience, compared to Liz Truss? Lack of, lack of behaving like a politician. You, see, you have to understand one thing. People in Britain don't like smart people. Uh, you know, I, I, I know I know that from a long experience. They actually like people to be sort of like themselves. You know, you have to say, oh, I, these are difficult problems, but let me try and guess what the deficit will be. Now, here is a man who knows about deficit to the last percentage point. He's very quick. He's very kind of uh, articulate. And that actually comes in your way to be elected. Uh, so, I mean, I, I myself have had a middle class job in this country for, what, 50 years, 60 years. I've never suffered any discrimination whatsoever. Now, people don't believe that, but, you know, that, that, that's my experience. So I think race matters if you are poor and working class and things like that. But it doesn't really matter if you are a Maharaja or an or a academic in a university no, or, you're all right. or if you're Rishi Sunak, because I wanted to come to that. Parvez Alam, how much of a factor in this race is Rishi Sunak's background, the fact that he's had a privileged upbringing, the wealth of him, his wealth and his wife's wealth have been much, much talked about in the run-up to this campaign. Is that a factor too amongst conservative voters? Well, a little bit of factor, but I think that in India and particularly, you know, in the media highlights, it's, it's a bigger factor. Where, you know, about uh, more than 300 members of parliament of the BJP, and you just count the number of Muslims there, and then count the numbers of other, you know, ethnic minor minorities. So, so you know, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a kind of a reverse racism, I would say. I think, look, racism, uh, this issue has not been solved. But let's also remember that uh, Barack Obama became the president of the United States of America and Donald Trump's, okay, America. So things are possible. And I think um, a positive change is needed here in this country and it's likely to happen. Let me give you just one example. Lord Desai mentioned Noroji, uh, you know, he who became the first member of parliament. Uh, and in 1929, there was just one. And then in 1987, there were four members from the ethnic minorities in the parliament. And come 2019, the golden year, you know, for the British cabinet in terms of having representation of um, minorities. And there were 65, in fact, there are 65 members of parliament uh, um, representing minorities. ethnic minorities. Now, the total population of ethnic minorities in uh, the UK is about 14 percent. So 10 percent we have already achieved and the rest of the 4 percent I'm sure will happen. Now, coming back to uh, Rishi Sunak Nidhi, you you said in the you know headlines that you know bad news for uh, Rishi Sunak. Now let me give you three very good you know news, breaking news items for Rishi Sunak. Obviously not good for the country, but sometimes in politics, what's good for you is you know uh, uh, Virendra Sharma uh, what I said about you know the. Uh, that um, being in the opposition, ob obviously one has to criticize. Now, the the uh, the good news for Rishi Sunak is that the interest rates in this country have just during the last couple of hours have been raised from 1.25 to 1.7 percent, the biggest hike in 27 years. The second headline is inflation is likely to peak more than 13 percent in October. Now, this is Bank of England. And finally, Bank of England has just said during the last again, a uh, couple of hours and that Britain is expected to fall into recession. So Bank of England has issued economic doomsday forecast. Now, who is better, you know, equipped? Yeah. 
to handle this issue is Rishi Sunak. And I think this is a, a development with the last two, three years. Now, lots of things are possible, as they say, that, uh, you know, a week um, is a long time in politics. So uh, 5th of September would be the a day when we would come to but know it's interesting about you, you, uh, the, 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 these developments on the economic to... front are, it's, it's an interesting point could, could that be the game changer shruti kapila possibly when uh, you know uh, you know conservative members look at what's staring at them in the face and that perhaps rishi sunak then is the best man to lead them Yes, I mean, I think it will be about economy and uh, and as the other, as Nicholas said about loyalty. I think that is a very kind of privileged emotion in British life. Whether you you seem to be and this stabbing of Johnson hasn't gone down well with the Tories. And let's not forget that Johnson remains fairly popular within the Tory Party and trust is very much. Uh, his candidate. But I think these the fact is that this is also the main week. The first week of voting is really considered to be the main vo voting period for uh, for the to for the Tory members. And I think as as the previous speaker said, this is good timing for Sunak because he does have the record with with the COVID budget. And he's also made a climb down on uh, on the question of raising taxes. And actually, pretty people are pretty petrified of the looming bills that are set to be you know, very high. In the, but in does the his wealthy background become a contradiction? Well, I mean, the thing is, yes and no. Uh, I think uh, the fact is that it hasn't gone down well, that he was wearing, uh, you know, a very expensive suit uh, for the first hustings. And that has been really kind of, you know, deconstructed across uh, the tabloids. Uh, it was not even a Savile Row suit, but even so, he's, he's being very you know, carefully being watched for, for money. But I think, having said that, I think Tory party also represents the rich. It is not really uh, the party of necessarily of the working poor. It's only of, in recent years it has become a party of the working poor. But I think what is going to be on a premium is who is going to actually efficiently, um, you know, navigate the country in the coming winter, which is set to be very restive socially and politically, but also it's going to be very, very bumpy economically. So he, of course, has the stripes uh, to lead on the basis of his experience, but of course, people are not going to forgive him so easily for stabbing Johnson, a very, very popular figure otherwise in the party. All right, then I, I, I go back to Lord Ranger, whom I started with uh, for, for the last word. Lord Rami Ranger, if you had to stick your neck out, do you think that Rishi Sunak can still pull this off? Rishi Sonak is the best candidate for the job because he has the experience. And you know, remember, we are going to have a free trade agreement with India. Who could get the maximum out of this free trade ag agreement than Rishi Sonak? So the Britain will be a better place if Rishi Sonak is leading the country because he has the ability to unite the party, he has the ability to turn the economy around, and he has the ability to fight the opposition on his merit. If you put give all these qualities to a candidate, Rishi Shawnak is cut above the rest in, in every state. So I think if racism doesn't play any part, I hope it doesn't, I am sure it will not, but if the, all the white member, majority of them, put the country before their prejudices, then Rishi will win hands down because he can deliver uh, one of the best and he will enhance the self-esteem of non-white in the United Kingdom. He will also attract non-white to the part, uh, Conservative Party in numbers. So the party will become stronger, the country will become stronger, and the economy will be stronger. It's a win-win situation with Rishi. So I think, I hope, this is a watershed moment in British politics, and the British people are ready. They have been... Uh, right. uh, very, very accommodating well, to all we the still have a We still have about a month to go and he may be down, but he's not out. So as they say, a week is a long time in politics. A month is a very, very long time in politics. Let's see how this eventually plays out. Thank you very much to all of you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.